I want to show you a slightly harder example. Uh, and not only is uh, just another uh, thing you can do with the comparison test, but also as a way of introducing a different uh, but related test called the limit comparison test. So let's prove that uh, the integral from 1 to infinity of x over square root of 4x to the fourth plus 1 diverges. This is almost the same as the problem that we did, except if you notice the problem we did, it was square root of 4x to the fourth minus 1. And in fact, our ability to form the correct inequality was, was based on uh, it was based on the uh, the fact that we were subtracting one in the denominator, and here we don't have that. It's tempting to, to I'll show you what people often do wrong with this sort of problem. The, the wrong thing that many people do is they say, okay, square root of 4x to the fourth plus one is greater than square root of 4x to the fourth. Say, okay, then one over 4x to the fourth plus one is less than one over 4x to the fourth, Then they put in the x, 4x to the fourth plus one is less than x, square root of 4x to the fourth, they say, aha, I know that this is going to come out to x over 2, this is going to come out to x over 2x squared, which equals x over, sorry, which equals 1 over 2x. So now you have this inequality. You've demonstrated that this is less than this. But this is one of those so what situations. In other words, what we know is that the integral from 1 to infinity of dx over 2x diverges, and whatever the integral of this function is, is less than that. Well, well so what? In other words, we, what we have is we have something that comes out to infinity, so this is y equals 1 over 2x, and then we have something that's less than that. But a lot of things are less than infinity. Sometimes it's just a smaller infinity, and sometimes it's a finite number. We don't know. So saying that you're less than infinity, you know, saying my, my function convert, my, the integral of my function converges because it's less than because it's less than something that comes out to infinity, that doesn't mean anything. So you can't actually do this. So what we have to do is erase all of this and, and start over, because that, that's not going to work. So the way we do this is a little bit tricky, is we're going to say 1 is, let's, let's start by observing that 1 is less than or equal to x to the fourth for all x greater than or equal to 1. That's, that's just true. Okay. So in that case, we can certainly say that uh, the square root of 4x to the fourth plus 1 is less than or equal to the square root of 4x to the fourth plus x to the fourth. In other words, I'm simply adding in. I'm using this inequality to add plus 1 and x to the fourth. Now notice that this is simply equal to 5x to the square, square root of 5x to the fourth. So I can now extend the inequality this way. Say 1 over 4x to the fourth plus 1 is greater than or equal to 1 over the square root of 5x to the fourth. And then finally, I can multiply both I can multiply both sides of this inequality by x. Since x is a positive number, I'm not changing the direction of the inequality. I'll just write them in here, and I get that. So I've demonstrated now that this, which is the integrand that, that appears in my problem, is greater than this expression. I can simplify this, of course. This is going to be x over square root of 5 times square root of x to the fourth is just x squared. I'm going to do a little cancellation here and get 1 over square root of 5 times x. The x is outside the square root sign. Okay, so I now have the, the correct inequality. I have 0 is less than or equal to 1 over square root of 5 times x, which is less than or equal to x over the square root of 4x to the fourth plus 1. So, just to be clear, in the comparison test, this is f and this is g. Okay, so what are we going to do here? We're going to observe that the integral of f of x, in other words, the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over root 5x dx, which is equal to 1 over root 5, 1 to infinity of dx over x, this diverges. Why does it diverge? And by the way, you always want to say why something diverges or converges. You want to justify it. You can say it's a p integral with p equals 1, and 1 is, of course, greater than or equal to 1, and therefore, um, Therefore, we know that, the, that that integral diverges. We also know that that integral is smaller than uh, the integral that we're trying to evaluate. Since we know that this is less than this, we can say, therefore, by the comparison test, by the comparison test, the integral of x dx over square root of 4x to the fourth plus 1 from 1 to infinity also 
diverges, and we'll put in the traditional Halmos mark. So, okay, so that's that's the proof that, that this integral diverges, and as you can see, it's a little trickier. This is always the complication, is forming the correct inequality in these problems. Now, let's, let me show you a slightly different way of doing this that makes this a little bit easier. This is the limit comparison test, and it's, it's kind of a mouthful like a lot of these things, but, but you'll see it's a little bit easier to use. Limit comparison test says, suppose that f is x is greater than 0, and so a greater than or equal to 0, and so is g, on the interval uh, from a to infinity. Now, if we calculate the limit as x approaches infinity of the ratio of these two functions, and call that limit l, as long as l is a positive finite number, it can't be 0, but it can't be infinity. If it's any number in between, it could be e, it could be pi, it could be a million point seventeen. it doesn't matter. As long as it's a positive and finite number, then then either, we get rid of that either, it's a little extra verbiage there, then the integral, uh, the integral from a to infinity of f and the integral from a to infinity of g either both converge or both diverge. In other words, they behave the same for the purpose of convergence. It can't be the case. If you get this condition, it can't be the case that one of them converges and one of them diverges. Why is this useful? Well, because usually what we're going to make g of x be is something where we know the convergence properties. In other words, we're going to choose a really nice p integral, or maybe an integral that we know converges for some other reason, and we're going to uh, and we're going to uh, to put it in the position of g so that we can compare it to f. And then, if let's say that I know that the integral of g converges and I get a finite positive number, then I know that the integral of f also converges. So, let's do the same problem again this way. Recall that this was the integral we were given was one to infinity of x dx over the square root of 4x squared plus 1. So what I'm going to do, oh, sorry, not x squared, it was x to the fourth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick, I'm going to, I'm going to pick something that's based on, on this. Now, essentially, I'm going to write out a very imprecise argument, and the problem is that I write this out and people think that what I'm about to write is the whole argument. They think that they can answer this way in a test, and they can't. That's you. You can't. They, the, um, what I'm about to do gives you is a way of figuring out what g of x in this theorem should be. So in other words, what the, pro, what the, in, what the, the function that you're going to want to compare f to is in order to form this comparison and calculate the limit. It's not an answer, it's just a basis to get the answer. So, the argument goes like this, x over the square root of 4x to the fourth plus 1. What is its true essence? Its true essence has to do with the highest powers in the numerator and the denominator. And you're going to see that because we're doing a limit comparison test, and this part of the test that says that L can be any constant means I don't even have to look at the coefficient, because all that's going to do is it's just going to give me a different fine, positive finite constant. I can really just look at the highest powers of x. So this is approximately, in its essence, is x over the square root of x to the fourth. I'm disregarding everything except the things that are really going to grow fast. That's equal to x over x squared, which equals 1 over x. So, in the limit comparison test, I'm going to choose the original integrand as f, and I'm going to choose this as g of x. So first, let's observe that the integral from 1 to infinity of g of x dx, which is the integral from 1 to infinity of dx over x, diverges. And you've got to state a reason. The reason is because p equals 1, which is greater than or equal to 1. By the way, you wonder, why do I keep writing that 1 is greater than or equal to 1? The answer is because in this p integral, this is, the, the p is actually 1, but the, the condition under which a p integral diverges is that it's greater than or equal to 1. So I can say that p equals 1, but then the point is that whatever number I get here has to be greater than or equal to 1, and 1 is not greater than 1, but it is greater than or equal to 1, so that's a correct statement. Okay, so now, um, having, said, having shown that g of x diverges, what I want to do is calculate the limit as x approaches infinity of f of x over g of x. That's going to equal the limit as x approaches infinity of x over the square root of 4x to the fourth plus 1 over 1 over x. In other words, I'm just, just putting in what f and g are. Let's simplify this a bit. This becomes the limit as x approaches infinity of 
1 over 1 over x is like multiplying by x, so that's going to give us x squared over the square root of 4x to the fourth plus 1. You, you'll want to work through the algebra a little bit uh, if, if you're confused by that, but basically I have x over the square root of 4x to the fourth plus 1 times the reciprocal of 1 over x, which is x over 1, so that's how I got x squared over 4x to the fourth plus 1. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to multiply this by 1. I'm going to multiply it by 1 over x squared over the square root of 1 over x to the fourth. Once again, just know your algebra well enough to understand why 1 over x squared and square root of 1 over x to the fourth are the same thing as long as x is positive. Actually, even if x is not positive, that's true. Sorry, in some, some cases you have to care whether it's positive, in some you don't. So this is going to be the limit as x approaches infinity, I'm going to multiply through, that becomes of 1 over the square root of 4 plus 1 over x to the fourth. We know what happens as x approaches infinity. We have a bunch of constants and then we have 1 over something that's getting very, very large. That's 1 over the square root of 4 plus 0, and this is therefore 1 over the square root of 4, which is 1 half. So that's equal to L. Now 3, what does the limit comparison test say? Now that we found L, we have to ask, is it between 0 and infinity? The answer is yes. 0 is less than 1 half is less than infinity. So we can now say that 4, because integral from 1 to infinity of dx over x diverges, so does integral from 1 to infinity of x dx over the square root of x to the fourth plus 1. And I would say that deserves, with more flourish, the end of proof symbol that nobody else uses except my class. So there we go. So that's, um, this is a limit comparison test proof. And by the way, in all of these, I haven't really been doing it, but what you really want to do is you want to name the theorem you're using. So in this case, we would write limit comparison test. And, oops, sorry. In this theorem, where we're proving this, we would want to say comparison test. When we get into infinite series, these two tests are going to be renamed, I think, direct comparison test and limit comparison test, but we'll use their, the names they give in, in the book for this section. So uh, you want to say that because, of course, these are theorems. If you're invoking the theorem, you should be able to identify the theorem by name that you're using. Okay, so we've just done a direct comparison and limit comparison proof of the, same, uh, of, of the, of the divergence of the same integral.